Welcome back to Hardball. Well, President Obama gave an interview to Israeli TV this week in an effort to sell a nuclear deal with Iran. It was a little counter lobbying, if you will, to Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu's huge push here in the States to oppose the deal. Well, in the interview, the president voiced his skepticism about Netanyahu's commitment to a two-state solution. Here it is. I think that when he spoke right before the election, uh, he was fairly unequivocal in saying that it wouldn't happen during his prime ministership. I think subsequently his statements uh, have suggested that there is the possibility of a Palestinian state. But it has so many caveats, so many conditions, that it is not realistic to think that those conditions would be met any time in the near future. Right. And so the danger here uh, is that Israel as a whole loses credibility. Well, it's comments from a former senior advisor to President Obama that are getting a lot of attention right now today. In fact, in a separate interview with Israeli TV, David Axelrod paraphrased what he recalled the president himself once telling him, quote, you know, I think I am the closest thing to a Jew that has ever sat in this office. For people to say that I am anti-Israeli or even worse, anti-Semitic, it hurts. That's the president, as paraphrased by David Axelrod. Anyway, critics have questioned that the president, President Obama, could think he's the closest thing to a Jew to ever hold the office, but... Does he have a point right there? Well, Jeremy Ben-Ami is the president of J Street, an advocacy group that calls itself pro-Israel and pro-peace, which I believe it is. Let me ask you about that. I know it's very tricky about anybody outside a group to talk about being inside a group. Tony Morrison famously once said that Bill Clinton was the first black president before he had a real first black president. What do you make of that comment? Well, I think that what he... What do you think he means? I think he means he's grown up educationally and then also in work around a group of very intellectual Jewish liberals who shared his commitment to civil rights and equal rights and working for those who have less and, and need more. And that's what he viewed to be the Jewish ethic. And, and yeah. he saw it in school and he saw it as law firm. He saw it in, in everything that he did. And so I think he considers himself in a sense to be an honorary member of the tribe in that sense. I know exactly what he means. Yeah. <laughs> I think he means in terms of uh, sort of ta literary tastes, political tastes, uh, lifestyle decisions, values, what you hold. He says, you know, I keep noticing that I pretty much agree with these folks I've been hanging around with on almost all that stuff. In fact, all of it, except I didn't come from where they came from. Anyway, the idea, this is where this gets hot, the idea of a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has been bipartisan foreign policy. We all know for decades that could change in 2016. A, re a number of Republican candidates have stated they are opposed even Jeb Bush, who says he supports it as a concept, has expressed doubt it's possible. His spokesman said, quote, both sides must be represented by leaders who have the ability to uphold the promise made at the negotiating table, something the Palestinian people do not have right now. Israel has right to be skeptical of the Palestinian leadership's ability to deliver. His fellow Republicans go much further. Here they are. Do you continue to support a two-state solution? I don't think the conditions exist for that today. I, do, I mean, that's the ideal outcome, but the conditions for, for a two-state two solution at this moment do not exist. Do you think that Israel should dismantle the settlements? Or no. The bottom line is that is legitimately Israeli country, and they have a right to do within their country just like we have a right to do within our country. There is no real legitimate two-state solution to be had. It's a wonderful political concept. But to having two different governments, one of whom doesn't really even acknowledge the existence of the other one, trying to govern the same piece of real estate is utterly unrealistic. Israel is a sovereign nation, and I trust the leaders of Israel to determine whether, whether they want to adopt a one-state solution or a two-state solution. So, so what I'm saying is we should trust Israel to make that determination. Meanwhile, Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, said, I don't have any problem with the Palestinians having a state, but does it need to be within the confines of Israeli territory? Is that necessary, or can you sort of slip that area down into Egypt? Now, I, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about Dr. Carson. He's a smart man, but he's talking about creating a Palestinian state in some other place, in Egypt. I, these people, I mean, it, it's either high pander or it's high ignorance. What do they mean? You're the expert. What are they going to do with all the Arab people that live in the territories? What well, are they there, going to do with them? There's 12 million people between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. Half of them are Jewish and half of them aren't. Yeah. 
And so what are you, you going to do with the you, other you half? Annex, you annex, even do it formally, legally, do whatever you want, pull the pencil work you want, and they're still with you. And, the, you know, the question is, can Israel survive as a democracy and be the national homeland of the Jewish people if you don't have two states? The pro-Israel position is to be for two states, to question two states. I mean, you lose either Israel's democracy or you lose it as a national That's an old debate, and I, I know that conflict since I was over there in six, and when I got out of the Peace Corps in 71. It's a, it's a conundrum, and these people that make these blithe statements, I think they're pandering to millions of, of evangelical voters and a couple of very pro-Israeli right-wing guys with some money, and everybody knows what's going on here. Right, and they're not pandering to the Jewish voter, because 80% no. of the Jewish voters support a two-state solution. I know, and you know, when you get to Israel, you're going to have a great argument over there. Only in the Republican Party is the argument over with. It's right. a ridiculous uh, bunch of people, panda bears, panda bears. Anyway, thank you, Jeremy Ben. Good luck with your thank organization. You. I think Appreciate you're trying it. hard for peace.